back to Between Two Rocks. I'm here with Sean Hilliker of Standard Uranium. Welcome, Sean. Thanks for having me, Roy. So, tell us about Standard Uranium. Yeah, Standard's a junior Canadian uranium exploration company and prospect generator. So we operate in the Athabasca Basin of Saskatchewan. We have 11 projects across the basin, and we are drilling for uranium, looking to make that next big discovery. I heard a joke about Standard the other day. Do you want to hear it? Sure. How many projects until Standard's portfolio is full? One more. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if they have merit, we can have as many as we want. I hear you're running five drill programs this winter. Is that true? Uh, yeah, throughout the year, actually, not just in the winter. Um, oh. We're going to line them all up like dominoes. We're drilling right now. And, uh, you know, we're going to be drilling basically through to October. So it's going to be good, yeah. Which one's your favorite, and is it hard to choose? It is hard to choose. You know, they're kind of like my kids a little bit, you know. Uh, our flagship is Davidson River for a reason. It's in my stomping grounds right next to the arrow deposit where I cut my teeth in uranium. Um, so, you know, the blue sky and torque on that one is, is probably the biggest. That's why, you know, it's our flagship. We're trying to recreate what we did at NextGen when I was there, so... But I do love the other ones as well. Lots of good property on the east side now. We've actually never drilled over there before. So this is the first year that we're actually getting a, getting a drill bit in the ground on the east side, yeah. Where were we? <sighs> drill programs. Sure. What has you excited that you've never really looked at before? Something like the east side where you feel a little bit out of your wheelhouse. What's got you excited about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a different model, right? We kind of broke the mold on the model with Arrow. So the basement hosted stuff. We know that these things aren't limited to the unconformity. Um, there's a whole lot, geologically speaking, that's going on that controls these things. So looking at structures, if we have the plumbing system. Um, but moving over to the east side, you know, it's, it's almost kind of easier because you have that sandstone there. Big alteration in Halo, potentially. So it's a little bit easier to vector in. It's not so discreet as looking for pure basement hosted stuff. Um, so I'm really excited, you know, I wouldn't say I'm out of my wheelhouse, but it's a new experience and I like that. Luckily, I have a couple of really good geos on my team that have spent lots of years exploring on the east side. So they bring that to the table and we're, we're looking for that, you know, high grade pancake hurricane style mineralization now. And that's where we're drilling right now at our Atlantic project. Do you think there have been a lot of missed opportunities over the years where maybe some of the larger companies weren't as receptive to your business model, which is essentially being a lot more open to joint ventures and essentially not limiting yourself to certain flagship properties because you have more partners and more options? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. I mean, it's... Um a relatively new thing for us as well. Like John and I had been kind of kicking around this idea for the better part of a year. Mm. And then we kind of just made the switch last summer. So it's, uh, you know, the OPM model is a pretty good model. Other people's money, right? It's, uh, it's working out pretty well. I mean, we can move our projects forward. We make sure that we structure these deals in, in a good way that protects standard and our shareholders. Um, keeps us busy, you know, covers our G&A costs for the year. And we can, you know, focus our capital that we raise into our flagships and things that we want to see. So if, uh, if these companies come in and they don't, you know, they go away after a year or two, they don't get anything, we get the project back. Um, but we get all that data, you know, upside for discoveries. Um, so I, I do think it's kind of a, you know, there's a few other companies that have been doing it. We've, we know those guys well. Um, and it, it works pretty well. So it's a, it's a good way to kind of manage you know, like you said, 11 projects and growing um, and making sure that we hold that good land down and be able to move things forward without, you know, diluting our shareholders too much. It's capital intensive in the basin, as you know. Have you and your team started to look at the Thelon Basin like everyone else? Now that there's a no <laughs> vacancy sign in the Athabasca, it's kind of yeah. the next natural look. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, short answer is no. Um, you know, the Athabasca Basin's far enough away. Uh, we got Sundog up by Uranium City, like we were just talking about prior to this. It's a 16, 17 hour drive up there. Um, the logistics and things is, is a little bit scary. The geology is good though. I, I will definitely say that. Um, 
you know, there's some smart folks working up in that uh, in that region. So I, I get it. And uh, but no, we're very focused on on the Athabasca. So I don't think we're going to be diving into that basin anytime soon. Do you have any questions for me? Um, yeah. So oh no, why? So uranium's hot again. You used to be a uranium geologist. I mean, you used to be a geologist, but now you just play one on TV. Correct. So how do you, how are you finding the adjustment to that and potential for your career being, you know, kind of on this side of things versus the one grinding away and potentially making a discovery? So you're not really giving yourself that opportunity anymore. What's with that? You know, Years ago, I started having this very hooker mantra of if you're good at something, never do it for free. And so that morphed into let's try and get paid for as little as possible. And when you sign on with one of those majors, their immediate raison d'etre is going to be to work you as much as possible, to extract <laughs> as much out of you as they possibly can. Yeah. And that's fine. That's a lot of fun. They sure yeah. take care of you. But I get so bored so quickly with any project, even when it's successful, because sometimes the best thing you can have happen is hit uranium on a project. And at the same time, if you're the logger, the worst thing that can happen <laughs> is that you hit uranium because yeah. it is such a labor intensive process to log uranium core and to figure it out and to go yep. through all of the safety procedures, the sinting, the splitting, Yep. All of it. It is incredibly exciting, but it is truly one of the most difficult commodities to work on, I think. And just yep. the smell. You never forget the smell. <laughs> That's oh, true. And it's impossible to describe. It's like death. It is kind of like death. I mean, the rocks also look like they came straight from hell. So Correct. it fits. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, think I, I get that. I understand. You know, when you, when you get to that phase, then you're production logging and it's a bit like a sweatshop. I won't name any names. But, you know, you and uh, I both have maybe been there. Yeah, but, uh, for sure. I also <laughs> learned a ton. But right now in my life, I've really been enjoying jumping from commodity to commodity, <coughs> uh, kind of just getting back into the swing of things, enjoying the travel aspect of it, trying not to worry as heavily about the logistics aspect of it, yep. having great clients that I love working with. I had the opportunity to really work with some great ones this last year where I was responsible for uh, bringing them onto the company, uh, kind of making their vision come to life. And even when they had terrible results, they were still really excited with what we did. And so that's, that's kind of something that I never got to experience with corporate life that yep. is really cool where I get to use my skill set of actually uh, being that forward facing client driven person that can kind of do wear both hats. Even yeah. though I agree, I am a terrible geologist. <laughs> yeah, when well. it comes right down to it, every, everyone will agree. Because when you ask people, they're like, Troy, yeah, he's very nice. Yeah. But. But. I mean, well, I mean, I love that for you. That's I good. do, I that's, do too. That's it's, good. I'm glad you're happy. Uh, I think I've, I've mentioned it before. Some people say fake it till you make it. I say fake it till you die. Uh, any, th any other questions for me, Sean? Um, yeah, just, I don't know, why are you, why are you so stylish, I guess? Uh, it distracts from a lack of skill set. Oh, it links perfectly with the previous question. <laughs> exactly. Okay. It comes right. full yeah. circle. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah. What's, what's in the future for you? You've worked <clears throat> on a discovery. You've written a thesis paper on it. You've taken this company in a brand new direction. You're overseeing 11 projects at once. What's left to do? Well, I mean, the biggest thing is, you know, the biggest elephant in the room, make a discovery. Another. Get, exactly. And get stupid rich and yeah. then probably never see me again. You know, so that's that's. But do. But if you <laughs> if on one of those 11 projects you made a discovery, what yeah. do you think is the likelihood that you wouldn't want to make it two out of 11 and then three out of 11 and then four out of 15 and six out of 20? And yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. It's like chasing the dragon. Right, I'm always going to be looking for that high, so that's that's the name of the game, Troy. Um, you know, that's exactly what I want to do. That that is the next thing for me, is to make this happen with you know the great group of people I've surrounded myself with, working with you know awesome vendors and things like Axiom. So it's it's uh, you know teamwork makes the dream work, and it's it's a really tight knit community, and uh, you know we're always 
rooting for each other's success. So that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, maybe, I don't know, running my own company or something. So I do like to stay busy, of course. But How good and interesting would a discovery have to be that you would want to come out of academic retirement to do your doctorate on it and John would let you? That's a good question. Um, you know, it would have to be, I don't know, it's got to be some world class for sure. You know, I had the invaluable experience of, you know, getting thrown right into the deep end with arrow. How do you top that? Exactly. So another arrow. Yeah. If I'm going to find the arrow 2.0 on Davidson River and then maybe I'll do that. I almost turned that paper into a doctorate, but I was like, fuck school, I've had enough. Like, I think that was the right decision for you. At the time, you know. Yeah, do you ever think back of what life would have been like if you had spent those extra years in academia? Do you think you would be at Standard now? Um, good question, probably not. I don't know, like it's, uh, my, my thing was either I wanna be a professor, I love teaching people, I love explaining geology in a way that people can digest, you know. It, it's very transferable to working in the, the corporate side of things now at Capital Markets, right? You get those elbow patches when yeah, you become a professor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's the salaries are both good, potentially. Um, you know, but there's a lot of perks. It was like either that or a CEO kind of thing. So you can see which way I'm going. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of things there. That's what I'm passionate about. I love geology, um, but, you know, and, and exploring. Like, I'm an explorationist. That's what I do. That's what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a good ride so far, and it's just going to get better. So, I agree. Yeah. I love watching your ride. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> now hit the button. That was easy. So, Sean, would you say that Davidson River is your white whale? Yeah, I, I would. You know, it's like, give it up, Davidson. It's <laughs> really, I mean, the geology is there. Um, everything's there. It's, it's a massive project. Um, we've done four modest programs on it. We're just starting to scratch the surface. You know, there's 70 plus kilometers of strike length. Um, you know, we've proved out the concept as far as this mirror theory, you know, drawing the analogy to arrow. Same basement rocks, same sorts of structures. We got the plumbing system. Are the fluids there? We could always point to, to the north to Smart Lake, Cameco uh, Pure Point JV. Uh, but now with F3 coming in, um, you know, they've had that project for 15 years. They've been working it on and off. Boom, they make a high grade discovery on the west side of the Clearwater domain. So that completely validates our thinking and you know, the rationale for what we're trying to do there. So it's, uh, it's definitely my white whale. I really hope that we can continue to work it and, and vector in, that's exactly what we're doing. So. We're gonna be, yeah, putting putting some drills back in there this year. That's the plan. We haven't been back since 2022. Um, we've done a lot of work on it since then. We've expanded the project. It's almost 31,000 hectares now. Um, and yeah, looking at what F3 did, you know, bringing that into the fold as well for for targeting and you know drawing those apples to apples sorts of geophysical, uh, t you know, targeting and everything like that. So we've started doing some machine learning stuff on it as well. Uh, with Gold Spot Discoveries, they came in and and uh, you know took the publicly available data from Arrow and Triple R, and matched that line by line to you know tie into the normal geology work we do to try and find these. So it'll be good to get back to the market and hopefully raise a bit of cash this year again. And then, like I said, with the the new model, we can focus that that capital into our flagship to push that forward. Yeah. Is F3's mineralization the first one on that side of the Clearwater? Uh, the first really high grade, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and with size. Like, they haven't been, Cameco, Pure Point, haven't been back to Smart Lake in a number of years, probably like 15 years. Why is that? Good question. I mean, it's Cameco, right? It's, Good question. Uh, yeah. Why um, is that? Why isn't there a drill program on La Rock Lake for Cameco? Yeah. Well, maybe there will be soon. I mean, I heard there was. Yeah. I heard they just they're just not saying anything because they don't have to. Well, exactly. So it's yeah. it's unfair. But no, I, I've I've heard that uh, mumblings across the across the lake is that there's a big yeah. chemical drill program going on over I there. I mean, you can look at Google Earth and see the drill pads. You can. So. Oh, I'm totally gonna check that out. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's a good thing though. Like I said, it uh, validates what we're trying to do over there. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we find something similar but better. Mm. Yeah.
No, that's really exciting. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get like much kind of pushback on some of your paper about Arrow in terms of how the model has been pushed on the east side with graphitic conductors and sandstone and the source of the mm -hmm. fluids? Did you ever have people approach you and kind of give you heat on uh, on your paper and your theories and the orogenic kind of source? Yeah, orogenic uranium. I mean, that's what I was I was kind of being a contrarian. Like I said, we broke the mold with that, right? We. Can, uh, so yeah, the answer is yeah. There was some some of the old timers that were like, "This fucking guy doesn't know what he's talking about." Um, some hate mail. Yeah, um, uh, no death threats really. Any uh, publicity is good publicity, though, right? If they're yeah. talking about you, that means that you're making a difference. Exactly, exactly. So you know, if we can if we can apply that, and you know, if I can if I can go find something else, then that'll really shut them up. So that's uh, you know another driving force behind pushing Davidson hard and seeing what we can do this year and uh, in the coming years, so. How much of your motivation is now pushed by? Spite. Revenge? Spite, Revenge. Yeah. yeah, spite deposit. <sighs> oh, that's actually a pretty sharp name. I think so. uh, that's mine now. Call it uh, Spite Fire. Spite Fire, <laughs> that's pretty good. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I mean, Chris and Scott would probably get a kick out of that, you know? I, they, spite I think Fire. I love that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna log that away. Um, Oh, oh my gosh, Sean, I, I am so sorry. I have a meeting with Can Alaska. I gotta go. What the fuck? Fuck this. <laughs>